So you get thrown into playing center the first time, and you don't know how long this is going to last or what it's going to look like. And here you are, you've, you've had a few games now. What, what was it like the, the first time you got thrown in? Was your head spinning at all? Uh, how prepared did you feel for that? And how have you been able to handle this so well? Um, I, I'd say I was pretty prepared the first time. I think, uh, I think everyone this season has got to see a snippet into, I think, the men we have in our line room and the men leading us. Um, you know, we everyone prepares like a starter, no matter at what position. And um, I felt I felt pretty prepared, prepared. Um, having a few experiences earlier in my career, not necessarily starts, but considerable considerable play time um, and a bunch of time with uh, Aaron being center, whether it's practice or those those games. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, I think a little more seamless than other people were expecting. Because we, you know, we hear all over the place, everyone's a play away from, you know, stepping in or whatever. But I just don't recall a team that has taken on that belief of preparing and playing like a starter, whether you're Aaron Rodgers or the 53rd on the roster. Why do you think that has taken such a hold here? Um, I just, I think it's a credit to our coaches and how they uh, preach that, preach that to us. I mean, um, speaking personally, last year I started week one versus the Vikings, but it was, wasn't necessarily because of anything other than a few guys were hurt. And unfortunately, someone got hurt that game, which led to me starting the remainder of the year. Um, so I know that that was used early this year when Steno talks to some of the young guys, especially when you know we had all our rookies in and our full room before cuts. Um, he's you know used that as examples or. Last year, I mean, with how many positions Elton played, um, that's another example. But you know, this is this is a long season. It's a tough season, and you know, you're only as good as your weakest link, or you're only as good as your, you know, last player on the roster. As as I think, you know, the season goes, we start to see that. So, um, but yeah, there's even the practice squad guys preparing to play, especially with the new elevations. I mean, it's it's huge that some of those guys can come in and step up. Just for, for years, you know, offensive linemen always say, hey, it doesn't matter who's in the backfield behind me, I'm blocking, I'm not looking behind, I'm looking ahead and blocking. But when you got AJ and, and Aaron Jones, what's, what's um, I hate to use the word unique, but what's unique about, you know, having those two different guys back there? Yeah, um, both of them are amazing at their own skill sets. Um, but it's not like there's a complete stark difference, you know. Um, I mean, Aaron can turn. I think the best part is talking with guys who are in other buildings and having other running backs. It's always interesting when they come in and see Aaron, who they can have. If we accidentally let somebody into the backfield, that should be a negative gain. He'll turn it into a, a four-yard gain, which is, you know, those are huge. Or, you know, you have certain plays that he busts for 70 and he makes three guys miss. And um, so that's electric. And then it, it's been a, very exciting to watch AJ come along and just have his uh, mentality, the way he runs the ball. Um, you know, we had a running back these last few years that ran hard, um, and he's a, he was a joy to block for, and, and A.J. is really becoming that. I mean, to have a running back that you can run just old school football plays with and know that he's going to get a guaranteed seven, if we put a hat on a hat, should be a touchdown. So that's, you know, both those guys are different, but very exciting. Lucas, assuming you guys are going to get him back at some point, just can you describe what, what it would mean to, to get Dave back out on the field for your unit? Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I don't know what game that'll be or when, but I know it's been so exciting to have him at practice. Um, to have the best offensive lineman in the NFL out here with our group, it just raises our practice habits. And it's, you know, not that we weren't doing hard, but his attention to detail is phenomenal. And the things that he can provide everyone is amazing and whether it's just you know a tip for me like hey remember when you did this there and or bringing up something that another player did here that did at a high level um that's just who he is it's it's not just the physical it's the physical the mental even the emotional and and riding steady through the whole game and the whole practice so um you know yeah love to have him back as soon as possible but you know those are medical decisions and upstairs decisions and I'm just happy to have him at practice and, and to bring that edge that he brings. 
<clears throat> Lucas, considering you, know, you guys are still a month away from the actual buy, I mean, how, how beneficial was this, as difficult as last week was to be able to reset a little bit here before these next four? Um, you're just speaking on the break we've had? Yeah. yeah um, I mean, it was really nice. <laughs> en enjoyed hanging out with some buddies, uh, you know, this weekend on a team and a little Halloween party. But um, these, these are great days to kind of unplug and um, – take some time to, you know, hang out. Like I hung out with my wife and, you know, took my dog for a walk around the neighborhood and handed out Halloween candy last night. Like sometimes it's good to take the, you know, the NFL player hat off for a little bit and just go be a husband or go be a, you know, a dad dog, I guess, or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's nice. It's just nice to unplug. It really is. And take that deep breath because uh, we, we're going to have a, a nice good stretch coming up and, you know, deep run into the, hopefully the postseason. You had the, the one snap, I think it was in Cincinnati, that kind of went a little wayward to, to Aaron. But has there been a bad snap other than that? I mean, is, is there any? Yeah, that's that's it, right? I haven't missed anything? Cause, uh, uh, I mean, I hope not. Uh, Aaron Aaron will let me know if it's otherwise. And, you know, it's it's all fun and games because, you know, Aaron, caught, Aaron Jones caught that one. and um, But that's – pretty unacceptable um, because, you know, that can flip a game. I mean, we saw in Arizona they had their backup or one of their reserve centers in, and, you know, that ball went wayward, and that could have been an even bigger momentum swing. Um, so, yeah, trying to work on it every day and even an individual and keep them – keep it on his numbers. The reason I ask is I just – I don't know there's a lot of guys that can just get thrown in at that position. I know that you had a lot of preparation. You played it a little bit before, but you, you haven't played it extensively and just handle it, the one bad snap in, in a handful of games. Have you done even better than you would have anticipated? Um, I mean, there's doesn't matter what my job requirement is. If it's part of my job requirement, I'm going to try and do it as best as I can, um, whether that's snapping the ball or not snapping the ball. Um, but, yeah, just – Knock on wood, keep up the hit in 12 in the numbers. Lucas, I, I forget which Aaron Jones run it was on Thursday, but it looked like the TV cut away, but you had like a big time fist pump after it. Um, how often do you get that excited about a block or a run in a game? Um, I, I think it all depends on when it happens. You know, I think the runs that either fans or, or other people think are exciting aren't as exciting to us. Like there's... You know, there's certain looks or, like, I'm pretty sure it was on that third down conversion. It was, like, third and four to five. Um, and I think we decided to run it. And it was a different look. And earlier in the game, I had messed something up that could have caused a critical error. Um, and so just to bounce back and handle it correctly and, and the great communication we had up front, that's what I was more excited about uh, in that environment, getting everyone on the same page. But I, I, it's just still so cool to be in this environment playing football, like a Thursday night game in Arizona, um, going against you know arguably the best team in the league at that point. It's just it's hard not to get excited and show emotion. Lucas, in that same vein, because you were talking about this, some of the stuff you learned from Corey, you know, working behind him. What is that like in terms of the communication side of it? How, how have you sort of adapted to that with you know with the calls and everything, and sort of being the guy that's responsible for that with the line? Yeah, um, I think the. The biggest thing that I'm I'm working on is is urgency or or quickness. Um, you know, really playing a lot next to Corey last year. All the bank reps he had of every look can help him diagnose the uniques faster. Um, so that's what I'm just trying to get to. I'm trying to get to the point where I can go up, rip a call. It may not be perfect, but everyone can start on the same page, and then you know we can work from there if we have to make adjustments. I want to go back to uh, yesterday. How did that Halloween party come together? And who had the best uh, costume? Um, I mean, yeah, we've been doing a Halloween party for since I've been here, and I'm pretty sure Big Dog put that put that one on. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of good costumes. I think uh, Sadie's um, he ended up winning as Bane um, inside the. But I don't know. I gotta I gotta give. I'm going to kind of pat myself on the back. My wife and I were big Yellowstone fans. We're excited for the season coming up. Yeah. <laughs> we, went, we went pretty authentic, and I even got like a belt buckle from with the Yellowstone Y. Um, but Foose, Kafusi and his wife, um, they did uh, Frankenstein and I guess Mrs. Frankenstein, which, like, he walked in with 
green paint and the little things sticking out. So it was, it was, it was really cool, a lot of fun. Um, it's just cool to you know be around the guys uh, outside the building. Still love with John Wick. Uh, I guess we'll give him love. Aaron gets enough love from everyone else. <laughs> Lucas, um, speaking of Aaron Rodgers and love, um, first of all, thanks for sharing the pancake story. For those of us that tell stories, that was really awesome that you shared that with us. Um, he obviously thinks loves you, right? He thinks the world of you. You told us a couple of years ago how you guys sat down. You told us that story now. But he's also gotten pissed at you during games, right? And gotten after you. And yeah. that kind of happened to Josiah, too, uh, in the game on Thursday night. How, as a player who is conscientious, which I think Josiah is as well, how do you move on in the moment? Like, if Demosky yells at me, I get pretty upset. So, I would, too. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Kind of I did. Um, but <laughs> Great <it, laughs> Like, how do you move on from that? And then how do you kind of view it in the big picture? Because you know how he feels about you, but mm -hmm. he also got really pissed. Um, great question. I think the best way to describe this is everyone has an uh, emotional bank account with people. Um, hopefully yours is, you know, quote unquote, has a lot of money. Like, I look at my emotional bank account with a lot of guys in this locker room. There's been a lot of deposits. And unfortunately, you guys don't get to see the deposits. And sometimes they're daily, sometimes they're weekly, sometimes it's one big one every two or three months. Um, but most of the time, y'all see the withdrawals, which is okay. Because if you have somebody who's making deposits, whether it's you know big, small, incremental, or whatever, when they make the withdrawal, there's you know emotional credit to give out. Um, so that's that's how I feel anytime he says or does anything, and you know that's how I feel with a lot of my teammates. Is I it, I get what you're saying. It, it doesn't matter how it comes out because I know you as a person and I trust you as a person. So whatever you need to say to get out of me the correction or um, you know whatever happens in that moment, how it's communicated, that's that's okay with me because of prior deposits they've put um, into our friendship. Is that a Lucas Patrickism, or did you hear that from somewhere? Uh, That's pretty darn good. I, there's no way I'm smart enough to come up with that. I probably got it from my mom or a friend, or. Um, but yeah, I mean that's you know, that's how you should treat people. Try and deposit more than you withdraw. I just got done. I, I literally used that in our parenting philosophy. I've told Paul of that before. Nice. Uh, you should use that with your dog. Um, <laughs> He didn't speak English yet. <laughs> so that, that, I mean, that's awesome. We're all going to use it, I guarantee it. My question then is, when it happens in a game, does it like refocus you? Does it piss you off a little bit yourself? Like, how, how do you then take it? Because when you have a wayward snap or whatever mm -hmm. else, you, you don't have time to, to, boy, that really hurt my feelings. You yeah, I would say I take it as a, uh, a correction. I mean, uh, there's few people, we have other people in our locker room who treat every snap and every opportunity like a championship rep, and, and he is one. And I think that's when he gets frustrated or when you see something because I wasn't a championship rep. Because at the end of the day, we're here to win the last game. Like, that's why all of us do everything we do in the off season. That's why we sacrifice to be here, you know, away from whatever, to live our lives, to do this, is to win our last game. Um, and that's his mentality. And, you know, when he gets on to me, it's, it's valid. And, I, yeah, I would say it refocuses me and, like, that wasn't good enough. Like, he, I didn't even know if it was on there. It was a play in the game when he said something to me and I, you know, responded back. And he's like, well, that's not good enough. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And then, you know, move on from there and learn from it and hopefully adapt in the game because that's when it matters. Um, speaking of not good enough, when you look at your offensive statistics, they're not that impressive, as good as you guys can be offensively. With all the stuff you've dealt with this season, though, do you feel good about where you guys are at, knowing that you have so much more in front of you and you can be so much better and you're already 7-1 and one, nevertheless? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're in a great position to grow and be coached because um, even watching the film with Steno, I mean, there's, you know, 15, 20 plays. I think every, you know, collectively, depending on the guys, we'd want back or to fix. 
but it's such a it's such a great learning environment because we do have the win and there is that positivity and that you know continue to growth continue to grow in that but there's also hard things that we do need to talk about and it is much easier to talk about that after a win and you know think about how much more productive we could have been in the run game the other night yes we were good but could have been even better